Hello, I'm Marsh Leffler, and this is Patrick Blank. We are from Runic Games, and today we're going to show you Hob, our newest game. Yeah, this is uh, some recent demos we have that we've been showing at uh, the shows. Um, we have two areas we were showing. One is Forest, and one is our Electric Dungeon. Uh, but today we're just going to run through Forest and show you what's new in the game and talk a little bit about what the game's about. So let's jump in. I like those little guys. They're neat. I like those little guys, too, in the distance there. You know, one of the big things about Hob that's really different than Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2 is that, you know, it's not random, like Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2, but um, it's really custom. It's all very personal, and it's we have a big story we're trying to tell you, and the world is doing that story as you play along. It's hard to explain, but there's no dialogue in the game. No, no dialogue, no text, a lot of uh, uh, reading things in the environment and kind of uh, understanding what's going on and what you need to do as the player. Um, so we're, we're out here and this is kind of a lush area, mm -hmm. a sunny lush area. Um, this is kind of uh, how our, our overworld areas are and then we have discrete areas that you go into that definitely have a different theme and a look and lighting to them, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but we're starting out here, we're just showing a lot of the life in the game, right? There's a lot of creatures you can interact with, and these guys are pretty cute. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a little bit of foreshadowing here. Yeah. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things that we definitely wanted to try to do with Hob was make a world that you wanted to explore. And in doing that, you know, you really do have to pay attention. You could follow the road, but it's more fun to get off the road. Right. Uh, so here's another thing. Uh, we have a lot of interaction in the world, the things that the player needs to do themselves to kind of progress forward. And this is this is one of them. We've just got a little blocking gate um, that the player needs to open so they can move forward. And we're kind of presented with a new area here. This is um, more wildlife going on. You see the little creature there jumping up. It's kind of a hint of where you should go. We don't... Because we don't have quest or dialogue, we don't do arrows pointing where you need to go. Um, we try not to be intrusive with that. Uh, we do subtle things like what you just saw there with the creature will go in a particular direction just to give you a hint, hey, this is something you can jump on or you should investigate. Um, what are these guys, Marsh? These are sketchies. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, they are just creatures in the environment. They are just giant hooved animals that you can find throughout the world. You can find more different ones, of course, but... Lots of cool creatures. Yep. Um, this area, you know, it has a lot of ruins. Um, a lot of things that uh, kind of indicate uh, what, what's going on in the world, the age of the world. A lot of this looks overgrown. Um, uh, here we've hit another gate that we can't get past, and, and we can see a switch up there, which probably opens this gate. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of a lot of what the world of Hob is, seeing something you need to interact with and figuring it out, figuring out the connections, and then figuring out how to get to those things. You know, Hob is, um, you know, it's something we've been working on for a while, and how we came up with Hob was not, was really about what we loved in games and all the different types of games that um, we'd been playing through the years and things that we love and things we didn't love. And, uh, you know, some of the things that we really wanted to capture from a few different games was, you know, like Shadow of the Colossus and Ico, where you're, you're very alone and you're in a world that you don't understand and the world is very different, uh, but yet some, some way kind of familiar. Um, and you don't know what that world is and playing the game is really kind of teaches you about it. And uh, that's why we have no dialogue. We don't have any NPCs. We don't have any real directions. You basically are just going to go out and explore this world. Yeah, it's it's nice because it's definitely an experience where you as the player are moving at your own pace. You know, we, we don't have our hands on your back pushing you through. There's not a lot of uh, scripted elements that you need to rush through or happening around you. It, it is an open world. It is... The more you play, the more you open up and you see how the world connects uh, to itself. Um, 
and there's a lot to there's a lot to look around and discover. There's a lot of things to find, and um, trying to trying to see things in the environment that make you question if that's something you can get to or if that's something you can jump to and you can make is a big part of it. Like this area might not look like it's something when you first pass by, but if you try uh, jumping around to these things and you discover that you can get over here, well, then we'd like to reward you with something once once you do. Um, this particular area, you, you kind of saw at the beginning, right? This is this was where one of those little creatures flew over the gap and led your eye over here. And if you remember that and you remember to look for it, and then when you find it, you find one of these. And what are these guys? These are just automatons that you will find throughout the world. Um, this guy is broken. He's just kind of hanging out. Um, and you basically break him open and you get energy. And using the energy, uh, as you do attacks, um, you might want to show them some attacks here. Um, like uh, you have your sword, but you also have that big club arm there, which I will tell you, you don't start with. And as you use the arm, you actually will use up energy. So the glove does take energy. Yeah, so that's one of the, uh, the character improvements you can find in the world is the more energy you get, the more attacks you can do, the, yep. the more difficult creatures you can fight, or groups of creatures. Um, and we do that uh, also, which we'll be showing later, with health as well. Yep. You also we should also tell people you don't start with that glove. Right. Uh, you do not start with the glove or the swor sword. Um, something happens early on in the story that the player acquires the glove that we're not going to spoil right now. But it is one of the main tools of the game. It is um, used for uh, navigational purposes once you start getting new abilities that are tied to the glove, and it is also used for combat, which we will show as well. So here we are, um, more creatures going on here, more things to explore. We're just kind of walking around looking at things, and uh, we just have a lot of little moments in the game like this where you might notice something. Um, cool and interesting that you might not be able to get to at that particular time, but later on you might be able to get to uh, or get inside and, and see what's in there. So, you know, at this point, it, it, it's a pretty standard, you know, you're running around collecting things, you know, it's, it's a neat environment. Uh, people at home can't really feel, but it, it's pretty fun to just the controls are pretty solid and but the thing that I feel that makes Hob really unique is about the thing you're about to show him here. Well, um, can I inter interject first? Okay. Let, let's talk about the grass really quick. <laughs> We've got to talk about the grass and this. You can cut the grass and it feels amazing. And everybody just wants to do this. It's, it's almost very zen in a way. Um, and we have a little bit of health pickups popping out of the grass, so there's always something there. Um, but this is really neat when you get into a combat with other creatures and, and you see them trying to attack you and cutting grass or creatures moving through it. The wind moving through the grass. It's just another part of the, the world that feels alive. But all right, let's get to the big ticket item, Marsh. So. What happened before we got to this? Well, you would be adventuring. You would find certain ruins. You would find certain devices. And sometimes you would find keys in them. And as you play through the world, you can't, you don't really, enter, again, you don't know, you don't have any story, you don't have any real knowledge, but you have to kind of piece everything together, and we have symbols, um, and you found what I will call a key, a world key, that has that symbol on it, and you're going to magically take it out of nowhere, but uh, <laughs> you're going to socket it in here. And there are several of these in the game that you'll find in the world. And this is this is a big part of Hob, uh, what we're doing here. You can see that's a pretty looks pretty empty out there. So what just happened? You raised part of the world, and not only do you raise part of the world, but as you go along in it, you can actually start shifting and moving certain sections of the world. Right. And Hob is really about getting into this world and trying to fix it. And as you start, you're gonna oh, so God. die. <laughs> the 
But it's dangerous, too. And you have to not only worry about the monsters, but you also have to figure out how this world actually works. And um, right. that's what Hob is really about. And this is how we have different areas. Obviously, this is our forest area. It's a little darker. A little darker. The vibe The vibe is different. Uh, we've got this guy up here, which is a nuisance. This is, we call him our bug thrower. Kind of hangs her out in this area and collects these bugs and then throws them as grenades. Um, but Forrest, yeah, this is part of the story too. You figure out why, what just happened and why. Why was that? Why did I just die? Because I <laughs> wasn't paying attention. But why Why are these areas not up? You know, the world is in a very broken state. Why do you come out of that? Yeah. So, um, that's cool. That's cool. Raising an entire zone and then immediately being able to walk on it is really neat. And that's a big part of the game. And we do that with a lot of different areas of the game. Um, and not just entire areas, but sections of the area that you need to raise or rotate to make connections. Um, you are essentially rebuilding the world in Hob, but why the world was broken is, is part of what you need to figure out while you play. Let's see if I can get this guy to uh, blow up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I tried to get away at the last second. So this is a. Uh, these are also our save stations, and as you can see, once you save with one of these, when you die, you will then respawn out of it. Um, so if you see those, it's good to grab them. Otherwise, you could be trekking from a previous one pretty far away. And I know you mentioned it earlier, but we should tell people again: this is an open world game. Yep. It's an. And then it's a little bit different in the fact that you do actually build it up and manipulate it and change it. Yeah. So. This area is different because of all these big trees and you can navigate through them and, and there's lots of them in the world and you gotta figure out how to get to different ones that lead to different sections that you couldn't get to otherwise. Um, and here, this is uh, something we do a lot when we want to showcase an area. We, we don't take the control the way on, on a lot of these. Um, I'm still free to move around, but we like to highlight points of interest of things that are upcoming that we want to foreshadow um, so you get a glimpse of them ahead of time um, so that when you get to them, you kind of make the connection of how far you've come or where they are in relation to other ones. I'm going to open this. This is a, a little bit of a shortcut so that if I do die again, which I'll try not to, <laughs> and I respawn, I don't have to jump through the trees to get back around here. I can just walk across this now. And here's a little guy. What's this guy down here? This little guy jumping in the corner. He was on our load screen. Yeah. So he's trying to get our attention. Oh. Or lead us to our death. So the glove actually does transform. You can see. And he just punched that shield. And smashed it. So that guy would have been tricky if I hadn't used my punch glove to break a shield. You can, you can always find ways to defeat the enemies, but if you find um, a different way to use your glove abilities to take advantage of, you you can make the fight a lot easier. We should also say that not all monsters actually are always about just using your glove or sword. That's true. You, a lot of them are environmental and you have to figure out... Something that you can't kill, right? They're, they're yeah. just, you have to get past them. This looks like kind of a canal of some sort. Yep, dried riverbed here. Yep. We saw this area when we first came into the forest. So, uh, do you want to talk about what this is, Marsh? Uh, it's a flower, Patrick. <laughs> Actually, this is uh, this is how our player gets health. Everything in the game, we wanted to be really physical, and so. There's no just chess that you find. There's everything is you piece it together, you build it, um, you find things that you can then absorb. But um, yeah, it's it's a cohesive world about which is one of the big things we were actually trying to do. Yeah, the the health uh, gem was kind of an oyster in the pearl thing. It's yeah something that's naturally tied into the world that benefits the player. 
Alright, we've got another one of these guys here. I'll pull up my shield. <laughs> little secret there. Looks like that's another uh, dead construct that we'll be able to get to later. So yeah, this this dried lake bed, or river bed rather, kind of acts like the, the highway through the forest a little bit. Um, something we're not going to show today, but is very cool, is uh, later on uh, you have the opportunity to actually restore flowing water to this river. Um, and ride it and get to different areas. It's very neat. And that's another big part of the game and rebuilding the world is, is bringing back some of the elements that are currently um, absent. Some more of these little guys. There's another one up there. plant up there. Some old looking ruins. You can see the little guy up top there. The player is looking up at him. Mm -hmm. It's more little guys. They they peek up every once in a while when you see them, and it's just kind of hinting at something again, something to come. And and they do play a bigger part in the game. Yes, they do. Um, but you don't know them very well yet, and they don't know you. We do also have lock on in the game, which is really handy. Yeah. There we go. Let's see what's over here. So this is an area that's inaccessible. You can see uh, more forest back there, but I, I obviously can't get back there from from this way. And, and this is an example of later on I will be able to get there once I find the solution. So we have our, our punch glove we've shown. Uh, we just used it on these wood spearmen a few times to break the shield and get an advantage of. But it also does play into the environment. If you can find certain things to punch, uh, you they will have a reaction to it. Like we can see this thing up here is glowing, but I can't get to it yet. So obviously we need to find a way to get to that um, and, and reach it. So looking around the area, we see a wall that looks a little bit different, looks a little more um, fragile, and we can punch it. So this is a, another thing just to look out for in the areas. There's other things that your gloves can interact with that uh, might not be the main path, but offer you side things uh, to discover um, if you happen to notice them. And we see another one at the top there of our camera. That is for a glove ability we don't have yet in this demo but we will get later yep. and once you do you can come back to the forest and use that to get to a new area we did show it in the last demo that we gave right uh, last year so. so i'm kind of backtracking these ruins to get to the initial one i saw pull this and now this is reachable so we're going to go ahead and give this a punch. I like this one because when you actually do this puzzle, you think it was all about getting this health. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm done. And you can jump down and move on and never yeah, finish the other part. But we're going to show you the other part. <laughs> I also like the cliff over here on the side. Huh. Kind of looks like something would go there, too. Yep. <laughs> Hinting at other things. Anything you see in here you can that looks of uh, that you can get to and climb, you, you can. Not in this demo, though. Not in the demo. <laughs> so this isn't so obvious, but again, it's one of those things if, if you happen to Scratch your head and wonder what happens if I get over there and you take a chance. You can see that something actually does happen. We 
can see some things that were hidden before are now revealed, and some things that were revealed, like the gears over to the left, are now hidden. The world kind of resets itself in a different state, and we have gained access to a little room down here. We've got some more of these guys checking us out, which is pretty cool. And over here, we can see another dead construct. So again, later on, as the game goes, a lot of this becomes more important, more energy. Uh, you can see you're, we're adding new ticks up there, more health, because as you go, the enemies are going to get more difficult and um, you're going to have to get more glove abilities. And these items just help facilitate you being able to use those more in combat. Got a lot of these guys. These are our brambles in the world. Um, if you happen to fall in those, bad things happen. Or if you get near them, obviously, you get a smack. Oh, something else is hitting us here. So here it looks like we have a uh, bug thrower that was trying to collect some bugs and ran into uh, some bugs who didn't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And no matter how many of these we kill, you can see they keep coming out of the nest. So this is an example of where you need to not necessarily destroy the things that are immediately in front of you, but try to figure out how to get past the source of it. So in this case, we can see there's some ruins here. We're going to try to navigate up and see if we can get to the nest. So we've been taught at this point by hitting blue bugs, blue bugs explode. So what happens if we hit this one? There we go. So if we finish these guys off, we've stopped the source of them spawning and we've also revealed a path by destroying the nest that we can now move forward with. Another guy over there we can't quite get to yet. And then this is it. This is pretty much the end of our forest section. Um, for this purpose, the, there's, the forest is huge. There's a lot we didn't show. Um, and there's a whole back half that you don't get to until later. So a lot of the areas we like to switch it up depending on when you get different abilities, you come back to them. So it's not once you're through them the first time, you're done with it. Um, but they do all open up and connect to different areas the more you play and the world just becomes one big puzzle in itself. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for what we're showing today. Yeah. And I think uh, at a later date, we'll try to show the electric dungeon. And then and as things come online, we'll be showing new things about Hob. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching today, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, guys.